All right, so we're doing the chapter four, mid-chapter checkpoint. Number one, a number that is the product of a number, an accounting number, is called a multiple. <clears throat> numbers that are easy to compute mentally are called compatible numbers. When a number cannot be divided evenly, the amount left over is called the remainder. On four and five, we're gonna draw a quick picture to help. So 26 divided by three. Okay, um, I'm just gonna share uh, groups of threes. Three, six, nine. I can share some more. Nine, 12, 15, 18. 18 plus nine is 27. So I can't put eight. I mean, I can't put groups of three again. Let's try two. Two, four, six. So now we have eight, 16, 24. Yeah, okay. So eight into each group. 26 take away 24 is 2. I can't share those two evenly into three groups, so 8 remainder 2. 19 divided by 4. All right, so we have four groups, and we're going to share 19. So in this one, in a sense, we went 3 times 8, and that gave me 24. So is there four times something that would get me close to 19? 4, 8, 12, 16. Four would, right? 4, 8, 12, 16. All right, 19 take away 16 is 3. I have 3 left, but I have 4 groups. So that's, that's it. So it's going to be 4, remainder 3. <clears throat> Number six, use a basic math fact to find the quotient. So 81 divided by 9. We know that that's a basic math fact. 9 times what is 81? 9. So we're going to rewrite this as 81 tens divided by 9. So 81 divided by 9 is 9 tens. And 9 tens equals 90. Number seven, 210 divided by seven. The basic math fact is 21, and we're going to divide by seven. So 21 tens divide by seven. Seven times three is 21. So 21 tens divide by seven, three tens. And three tens equals 30. All right, number eight, the basic math fact is 30. And we're going to divide that by six. So in this case, we have 30 hundreds. Okay, 30 hundreds divide by six. 30 divided by six is five. So five hundreds. And five hundreds we just write. That's five hundreds. Number nine, 635, we're going to use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient for 9, 10, and 11. So number nine, we want to change this to 630 divided by nine. 63 divided by nine is a compatible num number because we can do 63 divided by nine in our head because it's a basic math fact. So we're going to say 63 tens divided by nine. 63 divided by 9 is 7. 7 tens equals 70. 412. Well, I know that 5 times 8 is 40. So let's change 412 to 40. And so 40 tens divided by 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8. 
because 8 times 5 is 40. And 8 tens is 80. All right, 490 divided by 8. I know that 8 times 5 is 40, but I think I can get closer. 8 times 6 is 48. So let's change 490 to 480 divided by 8. So those are compatible numbers because it's a basic math fact that is easy to do mentally in your head. 48 tens divide by 8. 8 times 6 is 48. 6 tens equals 60. All right, use base 10 blocks to model the quotient. 63. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 1, 2, 3. And we have three groups. Well, I have six tens I need to share. We can start by just sharing three. Okay, and I'll cross those three out because I shared them. But I have three remaining, so I can still put one more in each group evenly. And now I have no tens left, but I have three ones. All right, well, let's just drop one one into each group. And we've shared those. We have nothing left. So we have 21. Two tens and a one, 21. 85. Well, we're going to represent that with eight tens and five ones. And we have five groups. Okay. Well, let's start sharing one of the tens into each group. All right, so that's five of them. Let's one, two, three, four, five. I have three tens left. I can't share three tens into five groups. But I can regroup those three tens as 30 ones. And 30 ones plus five ones is 35 ones. 35 divided by five. Well, that means I can put seven into each group. Fourteen, 21, 28, 35. How much do we have in each group? 110 and 7 ones. We have 17 in each group. And finally, we have 168 divided by 8. <clears throat> All right, so we have 16 tens and 8 ones. And we need to share into 8 groups. All right, well, let's put 110 into each group. All right, so that's eight tens. How many tens do we have left? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's, that's convenient, right? So we just put one more into each group. All right, so now we've used and shared all of our tens, and we have eight ones left. Well, that's good that I got eight boxes. All right, we shared all the eights. And I have 10, 21 into each group. All right, awesome. All right, let's go on to 15. Anna has 296 coins in her coin collection. She put the same number of coins in each of seven jars. About how many car coins does she have in each jar? About how many coins are in each jar? 296 coins, seven jars. So the division problem is 296, the dividend 296, shared with seven jars or seven groups. Well, if I was counting by sevens, I'd go seven, 14, 21, 28. And that would be the closest to 29 
if we were thinking of this as tens. So let's change 296 to 280. Because I don't need to find an exact answer. It says about how many. All right, so we have 28 tens shared with seven jars. Well, 28 divided by seven is four. So we have four tens. Four tens we know is 40. About 40 coins in each jar. Number 16, which two estimates is the quotient 345 divided by 8 between? Well, if we make a list of multiples of 8, we find that 34 tens is close to 32 tens and 40 tens, or is in between them. So let's change. Let's do 1, 320 divided by 8. And the other one, let's do 400 divided by 8. Okay, because we know 345 is in between those two dividends. Okay, so now 32 tens divided by 8. That's 4 tens, which equals 40. 40 divided by 8. 40 tens divide by 8. 40 divided by 8 is 5 tens. And 5 tens is 50. So the two estimates that 345 divided by 8 is in between is 40 and 50. A peanut vendor for 17 had 640 bags of peanuts. She so sold the same number of bags of peanuts at each of eight baseball games. How many bags of peanuts did she sell at each game? 640 bags, eight baseball games. So our division problem is 640 divided by eight. Well, this is a basic math fact. So 64 tens divide by eight. 8 times 8 is 64. So 64 tens divided by 8 is 8 tens. 8 tens equals 80. So the peanut vendor sold 80 bags of peanuts at each game. All right, so let's talk about number 18. I've already kind of written it out. But there are four students on a team for a relay race. How many teams can be made from 27 students? Well, if we have four circles, those will represent the, the four players, okay, the four students. So how many teams of four can I make? Well, I know 6 times 4 is 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6, 12, 18, 24. 27 take away 4 leaves me 3. So the most teams I can make is 6 teams of 4. The 3 left over I can't put on a team. So I can't have a 7th team. Okay, so right now we just have 6 teams. All right, so... Um, Let's move on to number eight, 19. Eight teams of high school students helped clean up trash in the community. Afterwards, they shared 23 pizzas equally. How many pizzas did each team get? Well, we can represent the eight teams as boxes or circles or uh, however you want to represent eight groups, okay? And we have 23 pizzas to share. Let's give each team one pizza first. All right, so that's eight. Well, there, there's more than eight left because eight plus eight is 16. So I'm going to give each team another pizza. All right, and so now we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 pizzas. Do I have enough to share one more time? I have a remainder of seven. 
no, I can't share that seven with the eight groups, right? So each team gets two full pizzas, and they're going to share seven-eighths of the remaining pizzas. Okay. So that's it for Chapter 4, Mid-Chapter check Checkpoint. I know you're going to do well on this quiz, so until next time, may the numbers always be in your favor.